Okay, this is part two, electronics for the Papyrus Paper Quadcopter. First, we're gonna need um, the frame that we built, and this is it. I'm not gonna go into great details, but we have four motors. Uh, these are 2911 Turnigy. These are Turnigy ESC six amps. These are two Velcro strips. And we have some rubber bands, a vibration pad that I got from the KKK box that I cut up. This is the KK 2.0 attached. I have a um, uh, orange uh, eight channel receiver, some propellers, and a wire harness, harness that I made. And uh, it has also some JSTs attached so I can attach it to the board and um, a camera if I want or LEDs. All right, let's begin. First, we take the motors and we're gonna place it to the far edge of the arm, just where the foot of the motor mount reaches. Uh, but we're gonna take a rubber band first and we're gonna wrap it two times around the arm. Okay, get it close together. And then we're gonna slide the foot of the motor mount through it and then pull tight and then come around the front foot and then on the side foots and then the other side foot on the back okay we're gonna keep doing this until we have a secure mount we'll put it over in the front a couple of times the side it's a little tricky, but it's not hard at all. It's just basically you need a little dexterity there. So it doesn't shift too much. If it's a little crooked, that's okay. You can just adjust it, you know, later on. Or you can put another rubber band once you're happy and make it super tight. Okay. The other arm, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to place the rubber band twice over it. line it up now the good thing about using the rubber bands is you're not going to really break a shaft or anything like that at all because um, it will twist it will turn instead of snapping off like a zip tie this will just like basically be all wonky looking but you can just uh, reposition it pretty easily just by lifting and turning the motor back into the right position so, all right, so we almost have this done over here. A couple times to the front, some on the side. Just do it until it feels secure and it's not gonna move. That's all you want. Front, back and forth. You can do some crisscrosses, whatever it takes to get this thing on and stay on. Remember, you could always adjust if it's a little crooked afterwards. Now, this is where that um, uh, filling came in before I told you about with the hot glue, because otherwise I found if you put that in there without the hot glue, the thing will get flat, you know, from the pressure from the rubber band. Uh, still worked though, but this is a little nicer looking and a little bit more stabler. All right, I'm gonna fast forward, save you some time over here. Put the last motor on. Okay, so now at this point right now, I'm gonna eyeball it, make my adjustments, make sure the motors are nice and lined up and even with each other. So not one is tipping forward and another one tipping back. So just wiggle it a little bit. Until you feel like you have it, you know, as close as possible to being straight. You know, take a look in the sides. That looks pretty good on that one. That one looks pretty good. All right, so you can see the rubber band, how it's wound around a couple of times. That's pretty secure, they ain't going nowhere. Okay, so uh, just keep winding it around across the front. All right, so I think you got the idea of this. Um, 
that's pretty much it for the motors. It's not going to wiggle. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is get the ESCs. And uh, we're going to plug these in. Doesn't really make that much of a difference which way they go now. You could always uh, change the rotation later on by swapping just two. Like a red and black, black and red. Um, and that would change the polarity of the motors. And um, you can make them go clockwise or kind of clockwise. Like any other um, quadcopter with their ESC or airplane. Okay, so um, this is pretty straightforward. Now these ESCs, um, I'm not too crazy about. I would prefer to use different ones. These are the um, 6 amp ESCs. I may want to try something with maybe like a 10 amp uh, ESC. And these motors, I'm not too crazy about either, but this is what I have. Uh, you can try with a bigger motor and, and see what happens. Uh, try making the arms bigger. Try getting like 16, I mean 17 inch uh, long printed paper or legal paper and you'll be able to have longer arms. Or try combining two sheets together to make a really long arm. At that point, I would recommend uh, putting more than three sheets per arm. I would say, you know, see how many it takes to make it strong enough. But if you interwind them correctly, they should be pretty strong. Okay, so uh, I'm just lining up to see how long a wires I have right now they're a little bit short I wish they could be a little longer but you know what this is a paper quadcopter I'm not gonna drive myself nuts by uh, making new wires so I'm gonna go as is all right so putting the last two in this is uh, ESC number three and I got one more you know there's a lot of things you can do with this design this design you know uh, you can try using uh, heavier paper and see how that works you could try using the um, glossy um, printer paper the kind of use of photos and that may give it a different feel and strength also uh, so I have a little space over here that I want to reserve and I'm gonna put a little uh, velcro strip and this is where I am going to mount the battery and the reason the strip is so long is because in case I need to adjust the CG weight of it, I can push it forward or back. Even with all my quadcopters, this one does not have a, uh, a strap. I'm not gonna need it, it's so light, it's not, it's not gonna be flying off. But on my bigger quads, um, I tend to always put Velcro on uh, my batteries and on the frame so it doesn't wiggle. And then on top of that, I put a strap. So. Um, I will never have a battery that's going to fly off unless it's a really, really major crash. But it keeps the batteries more secure. Alright, so what I'm doing right now is I'm putting some hot glue on the ESCs. So they're not flapping around and moving too much. I'm putting it over the, uh, the shrink wrap so it's easy to peel off after just apply a little heat, you know, or try and peel it off and it comes right off. It's no big deal, you know. Um, it's pretty easy to do. And it just makes it a little bit neater. Okay, so that one's down. And the final one. Okay, so... separating the wires so I can see and make a path because right in the center uh, I'm gonna put that uh, foam um, board but I'm gonna put some hot glue on it as you can see I've used this for other um, experiments and so I'm just reusing it peels right off and paper stuck to it even better it makes a better uh, adhesion and I'm just sticking it right there if you notice on the foam pad, I also have a um, Velcro. That way I can adjust um, or take out the um, uh, frame controller and the receiver. So everything come apart pretty easily. It's not really, you know, once you build it, you're done. Cutting a little strip there, and this is probably gonna be for the um, uh, receiver. 
so I can position it right there. Okay, so as you can see, you know, Velcro on the foam pad, Velcro in the back of my KK. Move the wires out of the way and put it right there in the center. And just uh, put the Velcro of the receiver onto the pad on the board and easy peasy. Okay, so now I gotta put the motor um, switches onto the flight controller. Um, so one thing I need to talk about is the motor order. Um, it's normally going from left to clockwise, going from the left motor um, with the KK. Some other flight controls go the opposite way. So make sure, you know, just because you're used to one board, every board's different, you know, so always triple check. Um, this happened to me and I thought I was doing it right. I thought my orientation was correct. Um, the motor order was correct. And a week later I realized that it was, um, my mistake you know if you look at the KK board it has a little diagram and just follow that once you get in there okay so I'm just popping the wires in uh, for the ESC's and the last thing I gotta do is attach the um, power cables now be careful with this step here too and triple check it because at this point, it's the easiest thing to do, and you may be in a hurry. It's like, oh, this is super easy, and uh, you may accidentally put a red to a black, and if you do that, you're going to fry something. So the, that's the last thing you want to do is fry an ESC at the very last minute and have to wait like two weeks for a new one to come in the mail. So just um, put them in correctly, and these uh, little JSTs, one is could be for a video camera or LED. Uh, one is going to be powering the uh, KK board so I can actually see uh, how much uh, power I have so it has an alarm. I didn't put the alarm buzzer on this board here, but uh, I don't really need it. You know, I'm not flying it that much. And so begin putting all the wires in. You know, it's always good to have an extra. Um, cable for power you know in case you want to power a camera an LED or something like that you know uh, if you can if you're making your own harness it's um, already there if you're buying a harness I know they do sell them uh, if you have a quadcopter get one for hex because you'll have the extra plugs already built in you know uh, always go up if you got a tricopter get a, um, a quad so it's always good to have an extra reserve. If not, you can always make your own. It's pretty easy to do, not that hard. So right now my wires are looking a little bit messy, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna clean them up in a little bit and um, it's not gonna matter that much right now because this is just a prototype and you know proof of concept to see if it works. Okay, I put some zip ties, um, checked it out a little bit, make sure everything is actually working and nothing is smoking. That's the last thing you wanna see is smoke, so I'm gonna put some propellers um, on them. Now, what I did was I got a little drill bit and I started to hold a little bit because these propellers were a little tight. Actually, they weren't tight, they did not fit at all. So I made it the hole a little bit bigger so I can jam them in there. So, the propellers are in there, push them down, nice and tight. And put the back ones on. And the last one over here. Uh, while I was off camera, I actually checked the um, motor rotation, which goes left, which goes right. I'm sure you know about that, so I didn't want to bother you with that part of the video. So uh, now I'm making my final adjustments. 
make sure everything's lined up. I'm praying that this thing is going to work. And all right, so that's basically it. Everything's wired up, everything's working. I got my spare uh, wires, or I zip tie some of the wires together so it's not so messy. Um, at the time, I would actually make nice fitted wires so it would be snaked around correctly. All right, so the next step will be um, putting a little cover on it. I printed this out and I out of um, thick matte printer paper, the kind of used for like you know uh, printing photos. And I just wanted to cover it up a little bit. So I can either use Velcro, so I'm just right now using some uh, scotch tape just to cover it up, make it a little neater. I could also put legs in this. Um, all I would have to do is um, get another rod, cut those into four pieces, and glue it to the underside of um, the body of the quadcopter or I could get some zip ties, make a little loop, and make little bouncy legs. Um, it's so flat, you know, I don't really need it. You know, I could just to make it a little bit cooler. Uh, so I'm just glue, scotch taping this thing right now to the side, and then I'm gonna pop this flap over this side and tape that down. Uh, I didn't put any Velcro on the frame yet. And that, until I'm satisfied with everything, you know. Again, this is the proof of concept. Uh, to show you guys how I made this okay so that's kind of neat right there you know you put your own design you know whatever you want to do get like an origami duck and put it in the front uh, tape that down so it doesn't flap around remember you don't want the propellers touching this because it can interfere and you know make it come down so uh, we've got plenty of space and this is the Guncraft Papyrus uh, paper quadcopter. Hope you enjoy this. And here is a sample of what it can do. Um, flying this inside my apartment. And uh, it's late at night, everybody's asleep, so I don't want to make too much noise. The settings on this right now is the factory defaults. I have not made any adjustments to the KK board, so it's a little bouncy here. Um, but it is hovering nicely it feels very 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 light um, when you touch the controls it, it, it flies up in a second so um, it's so light it's about 62 grams without the electronics and um, I should weigh it uh, with the electronics and tell you the complete weight of it you know right now uh, I'm just manually controlling this here flying it around uh, I don't want to go too crazy right now um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, read my blog at www.tommy-gun.com and um, let me see your ideas. If you come up with some uh, paper quadcopters or tricopters. That's another thing I'm thinking about doing is making a paper tricopter and I have another project coming up soon. Uh, which I'm going to be calling the Red Box, and I'll tell you all about that next time. Bye.